I'm playing Blackthorn. I really don't have that much history with this game. It was one of those games that I happened to see in a game store and I happened to pick it up. And I'm glad I did. It came out back in 1994 for the PC and for Super Nintendo. And it was made by a company that you've probably never heard of. Yeah, they're called Blizzard. They're most well known now for Warcraft, Starcraft, and Diablo, but this is actually one of their earlier efforts. And it's good. The game is a cinematic platformer, which is a lot like the original Prince of Persia or Out of This World. The animations are very fluid and well detailed, but the actual movement, jumping, and climbing is much slower than a traditional platformer. There's actually a huge backstory to Blackthorn, because, you know, it's from Blizzard. They had this massive prologue about the world and Blackthorn and his importance, all included in the instruction manual but I don't have the instruction manual, so I get to go by the abridged version that they provide in the game. It starts off on the planet of Tool, inside the lair of the main villain, Sarlacc. And yes, it's one letter away from being from Star Wars. As a side note, look at how awesome this animation is. Seriously, for the time, this is like PC-grade adventure game graphics on the Super Nintendo. Anyway, Sarlacc wants to take over the planet of Tool because... he's evil. He's ready to attack King Vlaros... Vlaris? Vlaris? Mm. The king at Castle Stonefist, and acquire something called the Light Stone. The attack goes well, so the king gives the stone to his son, and the wizard Galadriel teleports him away to Earth. And in 20 years, that son grows up to be Kyle Blackthorn. Which, by the way, Kyle Blackthorn is a huge badass. He's the epitome of cool in every sense of the word. Look, we'll break him down. Check out his attire. He wears combat boots, a pair of jeans with holes in them, a wife beater, and flowing 80s glam rock hair. He also wears a pair of sunglasses all the time, even inside a dimly lit mining cavern. If that isn't cool enough, his weapon of choice is a shotgun. Shotguns are never not cool. And when he isn't using the shotgun, he shoves it down the back of his pants, firmly gripped between his butt cheeks like an iron vice. Oh, I'm sorry, is that not cool enough for you? Because you haven't seen Kyle Blackthorne's best combat maneuver. It's something so cool that it'll be iconic and tied to Blackthorne in your mind for the rest of your life. It's something that, to my knowledge, no one else has ever done or is even capable of. Are you ready for this? Check this out. That is awesome! The dude reaches behind him, fires his shotgun, and kills whatever is behind him. Without looking! This would break the arm of a lesser man! After discovering this, I made it a point to kill as many things as possible without looking. It's a rule. The Blackthorn rule. And for further proof that he's a badass, Blackthorn is trying to hitchhike on the side of a road at the beginning of the game, when a magical light appears to teleport him back to Tool and his first reaction to seeing it is to pull out his shotgun and try to shoot it. Anyway, Blackthorn is teleported back to his home planet, and he starts inside some sort of mine. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a slow-paced platformer, and because of this, the controls are kind of weird to get used to. Whenever you move, you always move in a certain amount of space like it was tile-based. So, because of this, you walk forward very slowly, and turning around can feel unresponsive and sluggish. This gets to be a problem because the game has a fair amount of running and jumping in it. The jumping is less responsive than anything else because of that weird tile-based movement. The standing still and jumping is no problem, but the run then jump is iffy. If you're not absolutely precise, you'll miss, which, especially in the later levels, will happen quite a bit. Inside the mine, Blackthorn finds his people, known as the Androthi, enslaved in mining... something, and their slave masters are orcs. The combat is just as slow paced as a movement, but I really don't mean that in a negative way. Every firefight is a cover based shoot off. You hear that, Gears of War? Blackthorn did it first! 
To be fair, Blackthorn's definition of cover is leaning into the background, even when there's nothing there. Pressing up on the D-pad makes him hide in the shadows a little bit, and it makes him dodge almost everything. Enemy fire, whips, little spider bomb thingies. Nearly every enemy can do it too, so fights become hiding until the enemy pops out and fires, and you retaliate. It's not exactly adrenaline pumping action, but it's not easy either. The orcs will pump their gun to signal when they're done shooting, and that's your chance to pop out and fire. They're not so bad, but in later stages, you fight Andrathi traitors who have a pistol. These guys are the worst to fight with. They fire a completely random amount of shots before hiding, anywhere between two to six times. And they hide so quickly afterwards, they're really hard to hit. So you have to guess when to pop out and fire just to land a shot on them. And even though they're just normal dudes, they can take more bullets than the orcs can. Back to the mines. Throughout every level, you'll find Andrathi slaved, chained up, or mindlessly wandering around. You can talk to them, and oftentimes they'll give Blackthorn a helpful item, like a bomb or a healing potion. Because of this, I felt it was important to talk to all of them. The problem is that they get killed in a single shot. So there were several occasions where I literally took a bullet to save some of them. Only to find out they say things like, Curse this terrible life! Curse Sarlacc! And, Urn. I kinda got pissed whenever this happens because it wasn't worth saving them. There's also no penalty for them dying, so... Getting the items from the prisoners is important though, because that's where the main gameplay comes from. Even less than the platforming or shooting is puzzle gameplay. Every stage has a set amount of items to find, including bombs, bridge keys, and controllable exploding wasps. You need to use the items at certain locations. Blowing open doors, using the levitator to get to new heights, and the wasps are almost always for blowing up out of reach generators. And if you happen to waste one of those all important items on something stupid, you can't beat the level. It's why pressing pause shows the give up option and lets you start over. Not a whole lot of plot happens between the beginning of the game to the end. You start in the mines, then mess around in a bunch of giant trees, then a desert, and finally through Sarlacc's castle. When you get to his lair, him and Blackthorn exchange words. At last we meet, Whelp. I shall destroy you just like I destroyed your weakling father. You will not catch me off guard as you did my father. You are about to witness true strength. Okay, hold up. Blackthorn says witness true strength. What he means to say is, witness my shotgun. Because at this point in the game, the shotgun has been upgraded to the point where it doesn't need to reload, is fully automatic, and fires explosive rounds. Strength nothing, he brought a big friggin' gun to the fight. Sure enough, Sarlacc is the big climactic boss fight. And I gotta be honest, this is easily my least favorite part of the game. All of the item puzzles and slow-paced gameplay has been thrown out for an action-based boss fight. You need to do some quick movement and dodging to not get hit, which, with this control scheme, is pretty much impossible. It goes against what the rest of the game has been up to this point. Sarlacc will shoot a fireball that can only be dodged by hiding, make lightning appear from the ground, or will just straight up punch you. While this is going on, his two dogs vomit firebombs from the ceiling. But with all of that together, He's really not that hard of a boss fight. Yeah, I died, but it only took me like four or five tries to kill him. It was kind of disappointing, considering how hard it was just to get here. The payoff, however, is glorious. Before the fight, Blackthorn threatens that he's going to keep Sarlacc's skull as a trophy. And sure enough, when he kills him, he mounts his skull on the wall. Blackthorn ruled justly and fairly, and he ruled with honor. Bullshit! He ruled with a shotgun! He was respected by his friends and feared by his enemies. He had a shotgun! And hot chicks! Which, for the record, just proves how cool Kyle Blackthorn is. And the ending does satisfy the amount of effort put in. That's why my final rating for this game is a one arm no look behind the back shotgun shot out of 10. It's awkward at first and a little unwieldy, but I can't deny that there's just something badass about Blackthorn. The game is challenging and unforgiving, but slowly figuring out when and where to use items is part of the fun. The actual combat is rather boring in the grand scheme of things, but it mixes up the pacing and keeps you interested. Overall, it's a really solid puzzle platformer, and I do recommend that you play it sometime. 
I also recommend being strong enough to be able to fire a shotgun behind your back with one arm, which I am going to work on right away. I'll get back to you on this.